Hey guys. Hey everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to my channel. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I know I've been gone a lot. I feel like the past like two weeks, I've barely been able to work. And I know it's because I haven't really been able to work. I'm two episodes behind on the show. Um, so we're going to do the episode before last. Not this last one. Let me tell you guys, this last, this past Friday's episode got me in such a tizzy. I think I, I think I watched it. I don't remember what night I watched it, but I watched it when I was going to bed and I was like furious at what was happening on this past Friday's episode. Okay, so this past week's episode, we will go over tomorrow. We'll go over week before last. So this week's episode is titled More Money, More Problems. That's where we're at. And I was able to find a free version over on YouTube. So I did link it in the description box below. Okay, one thing that I do want to start off by saying, because I always notice this when people comment on the videos after they go up, uh, people are confused on where we're at right now. So the episodes were filmed like six months ago. Sometimes you will see a video of mine where we talk about what's happening on the show. It's not real time. But sometimes you will see a video of mine where I comment on what's going on in their lives in real time, right? So that's why it can kind of be confusing at times is because sometimes you will hear me talk about them and you will hear me talk about, you know, Alana being in college and, and June having custody of her granddaughter and Anna being passed away. And then I will do videos where we are keeping up with the story from the show and we will talk about it, you know, six months behind. So I'm going to shoot for this past Friday's episode tomorrow. That's what I'm going to shoot for. Okay, guys. All right. So where we're at right now, we're like six months back. Alana did go to college. She is in Colorado. She just started her second semester of school. So she's there. Shout out to Alana. Like shout out to you for sticking to it, making sure you got there and you're in your second semester. So that's awesome. So proud to hear that. Um, because June clearly did not want Alana to go. And a lot of the family is questioning, why don't June want her to go? A lot of people think that June doesn't want Alana to go for reasons like, oh, well, you know, that's her baby. She don't want to see. That's something that Anna said at the, the ice cream shop. Anna's like, you know, maybe mama don't want Alana to go because Alana's her baby. And they just started reconnecting. And like Jessica said, Jessica said, June ain't got no right to stop her. June has been out of Alana's, she was out of Alana's life for several years. So it, she has no ability to come in right now and say that she shouldn't go. But that's what Anna th thought. Anna thought, oh, it's because, you know, that's her baby. And then Pumpkin and them was thinking, well, maybe it's because of Anna. Truth be told, my opinion, it's not, June doesn't want Alana to go to college because Alana will need money. And she will be like, mama, where's my money for my Coogan account? exactly it's all about the money it's not because of any other reason it's not that that's her baby it's not that anna it is strictly because alana is going to need money that june does not have and june will be found out and i think we're going to see that coming up in the next few weeks so let's get in to the weeks this past week's episode and i do apologize that i wasn't able to do it before um, but previously, what we know is June and Justin, they are getting ready to move back to Georgia to be close to Anna. June is mad at Dodo for not showing up at Alana's graduation. I did get confirmation from Dodo on a recent TikTok live that the family knew in advance that she wasn't going to be able to make it. Um, so a couple Fridays ago, we were on our way home from Shreveport. I, maybe it was the day that we went and looked. No, it wasn't Fridays. Anyways. One night, me and Sean were on our way back from Shreveport, and uh, somebody messaged me and said, hey, Dodo's on a TikTok live. So I jumped in, you know, to see what she was talking about. And I started asking her questions. I'm like, hey, I was told that this was more of a storyline, that they knew you weren't going to make it to the graduation. And she's like, yes, they did know in advance that I wasn't going to make it to the graduation. Here's what Dodo said on her TikTok. She said her vacation was planned months prior, that it was Dodo, her daughter, Amber, her grandson, and then like two other friends and their kids. Amber and these other two ladies had to take this vacation, um, like on their vacation from work. So they had to plan this vacation when they could go, which was either when they could take a vacation from work or they had vacation from work. 
you know what I'm saying? Like it was all planned very around their work schedule. When Dodo was planning her vacation, she reached out to June and Alana and Pumpkin and everybody like, hey, when's graduation? I'm trying to plan a vacation. When is it? They never told her. They were like, we don't know. We'll, you'll get an invitation. Um, check the school website. All of those things she did. She did do. She checked the school website. She called the school. And they were basically like, oh, it's like the last day of the, it's a, it's like the day after the last um, day of school. She was told something along those lines. Like it's the day after the last day of school. So she went ahead and she planned the vacation. It was about a week or so beforehand that she found out the date. She knew she couldn't go. So she texted Pumpkin and was like, hey, like I've already planned this vacation. Everything was fine. It wasn't this big deal. The show made it into a storyline. Maybe June was really upset. But as far as like Alana and Pumpkin really being that mad, I'm being told that was not the case. That, you know, she tried to get the date ahead of time. Either way, on the show, Pumpkin, Alana, and Dodo, uh, Pumpkin, Alana, and June are all upset with Dodo over that. On the show, June has been posting things on social media about Dodo not going to the graduation. I can tell you that never really happened in real life. Now, June did say some things. June did an interview with Entertainment Tonight. June, Alana, Pumpkin, and Jessica did an interview with Entertainment Tonight where they discussed Anna's cancer for the most part. They did discuss Alana going to school and stuff, but for the most part, they were discussing Anna. This was before Anna passed away. June did take shots at Dodo on that interview and on like two other interviews where she said basically, she basically said Dodo was not there during the chemo, that she wasn't going to chemo treatments. She was like, the only people there for Anna is me, Justin, Alana, Jessica, and Pumpkin, and that's it. She did make comments about Dodo not being there for Anna during Anna's cancer treatment. I did see that in real time months ago. Um, but I, these little things that they're popping up where it's like, can you find Dodo at the graduation? She wasn't there. I never saw any of that. I never saw any of that. I think they're putting that up just to dramatize the show and make it look like June was talking about Dodo um, even more blatantly than she already was. I mean, she did talk about her, but she talked about her in reference to not showing up for Anna, not necessarily the, the graduation. Okay. So, um, oh, and Eldridge and Eldridge. So right here where this episode starts, or this is a playback of last week. Dodo's not there. Dodo's not even been around. I want you to take care of you. I want you to talk to her. I want you to talk to her. Okay, so this is Amber, and I do have it in, like, super fast speed because we TV they'll get me. But this is last week's episode where Dodo is sitting down with Amber, and Amber's like, I want you to have a conversation with June and tell her to shut up. Back up. Leave us alone. Stop talking bad about us. Like, we've been there for everything concerning her girls. And just because you missed graduation, that doesn't give her the right to bash you. Like, so Amber, and I'm like, yay, Amber. I love that Amber is, like, going to bat for her mom. She's like, no, that might be your sister, but you're my mama. And she's going to shut up. Get her to shut up, you know. Uh, love that. Love that Amber is defending her mom. So that's part of last week's episode. Alana is unsure of what she wants to do because Draylon's legal issues. He's unsure if he can leave the state. And he hasn't really been trying to find out either if he could leave. Like, he hasn't made any calls. So Pumpkin had to literally go pick him up, take him to the bondsman um, to try to find out if he could go because they thought the bondsman would be able to give Draylon permission to leave the state. But that was not the case. The bondsman was not able to get permission. The bondsman basically said you have to call the DA, and the DA will have to be the one to give you permission. So at the end of last week's episode, what the DA said, you need to contact a lawyer. So he's been given the runaround, basically. But at the end of last week's episode, Alana told Pumpkin that she needed to quit nagging her over college because she had made her decision over whether or not she was going to go. So that's where we end off on two episodes back, and we pick up with episode before last, which is what we're going to cover today. Season 6, episode 15, titled More Money, More Problems. So... Alana has decided to go to college, but she's unsure if Draylon can go. But they have at least got Draylon on the path to figure out if he can go. He's working that. You know, June's upset with Dodo, and Dodo's re ready to call June out. So it picks up with Alana basically telling Pumpkin that she has decided that she's going to go. She's like, you can quit nagging me now. 
I'm going to go. And Pumpkin gets very excited. Obviously, she gets up. She goes to her room. She comes back out with a shirt that says something about Colorado. And she's like, we all got Colorado merch. I'm so excited for you. She tells Pumpkin that it was a talk that she gave her. Because Pumpkin's like, so what made you decide to go? And she's like, she's like honestly, you did. Uh, the talk that you gave me the other day about how first loves don't always work out. So I need to follow my dreams and not uh, piss away opportunities over a boy that she needs to do what's best for her. And if Draylon really loves her, he would do whatever he could do to be there for her. I'm so glad, you know, whether or not this is what how she really made the decision or if in real life she found out before she made the decision that Draylon could go. Either way, I'm glad that she went. The next day, Pumpkin, Josh, and Alana are headed to Alabama to help Justin and June move. Alana tagged along so she could tell June that she made her decision about going to about going to college. Okay. So this is them on their way. What to do is drive the y'all boost, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, thank you. So uh, they brought Alana, like I said, so she could tell June that she's made her decision. Right here in this part, they're basically saying like, when we get over there, they better not put us to work. And Josh is like, no, they only asked me to drive the truck. I'm not going over there to help pack up this house. I'm going to drive the truck back. I'm not going to do anything else. We then jump on over to June and Justin's house. They are packing up. Well, Justin's mainly packing. June's not doing a whole, whole lot. But Justin's packing up. And Justin gets frustrated because he keeps finding snack cake wrappers everywhere as they're packing the house. This house if i keep finding snack cake wrappers all over the place it's like you know going on a treasure hunt so he's like he's like upset he's like dude this is crazy we're never gonna get out of this house if i keep finding snack cake snack cake wrappers everywhere they all arrive mama got the pack number one okay so they all arrive and they've already been like listen we're not packing this house up we're driving to u-haul that's it after they get there june seems shocked that alana is with her with pumpkin so Pumpkin walks in. She's like, Mama, we're here. I have Alana. And June's like, why do you have Alana? And she's like, because Alana wanted to come to talk to you to tell you something. So June sits down. She's like, what is it? Um, and Alana tells her. She's like, I've decided to go to college. June is not happy at all. She starts bringing up all the things that can make it difficult for Alana. She's pointing out all the ways that Alana's not prepared. She points out the fact that Alana doesn't have a house. She's like, you don't know if Trayla can go. You haven't enrolled in your classes. Houses in that area are super expensive. Alana gets upset that June seemingly is not wanting her to go. So Alana walks out. So as you can, guys can see, June was not happy. Like she really wasn't happy. I mean, you know, most kids, most parents do want their kids to go to college. And if they got some sort of scholarship that's going to pay a majority of it, they're even happier. And they're more than happy to figure out how to make sure their kids can go to college. You know what I'm saying? Like. The fact that Alana got $21,000 scholarship, whatever it was, a lot of people question whether or not it was an actual scholarship because her GPA was, according to Alana, her GPA was like 2.8. And I don't know much about scholarships, but a lot of people's like, you're not going to get a scholarship with a 2.8. I don't know for sure. So I don't know what she got, but she got some sort of help for her to, that's going to pay a portion of the money for her to go. And I just feel like June's attitude towards this is not how a mom acts at all. But June normally doesn't act the way most parents do act. So I can't say I'm too, too shocked when it comes to June. It really should have been a happy moment. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. The cycle for their family has been like, get pregnant young, choose men over your children. Like, okay, June's mom. According to June and Dodo, when they were younger, she was not there for them a lot. She chose men. She ran behind men and alcohol. And that's why June and Dodo, in the beginning, didn't have, like, the best relationship. Now, I know June kind of reconnected with her mom. But after the Anna thing happened, she shut her mom out again. When June and Dodo's mom was off gallivant and chasing men and whatever, Dodo, who is, like, 14 or 15 years older than June, she stepped up to raise June. Dodo raised June. Then June gets pregnant super early, 14, 15 years old. She has four kids. And guess what? One of her oldest, not the oldest, but has to take in the youngest. So it's literally this cycle that just continues. So when someone is about to break that cycle and go to college, 
She's made it to 18. She's not pregnant. She's about to go off to college for something like nursing. That should be a huge moment for you to be like, oh my God, this is great. She's breaking the cycle. Like she's made it to 18. She's not pregnant. She has goals. She wants to get out of Georgia. Like the fact that she treated it like any, like, like, oh, well, I'm just scared that she's going to crash and burn. That's, what the hell is she going to crash and burn if she gets pregnant at 15? How bad is she going to crash and burn when she don't have an education? And she just, you know, gets married at 18 and has a baby at 19 and is a stay-at-home wife to her boyfriend. And I've seen people, I follow the um, Mama June fan pages, and I've seen people ask the question, like, what is what does Draylon do? Does he have a job? And people's like, no, he don't have a job. He don't have a job. Draylon has a job. I was told Draylon has a job. The only thing is they can't talk about his job on TV because it's illegal. Okay? Draylon, what my sources told me, Draylon knew Pumpkin and Josh because he was their sales rep. Mary Jane. He was their sales representative to keep them in supply of Mary Jane. This is what I was told, okay? This is what I was told. My sources told me that him and this other guy, I think Draco is his name, they were friends with Pumpkin and Josh for that reason. And Alana knew him through them and just and liked him, okay? So he does have a job. Could you imagine? I mean, what does she want? So he's a street pharmacist, allegedly. So what does she want? Draylon to continue with his job being a, a street pharmacist and Alana to not work and get pregnant and just be a housewife while her husband is a street pharmacist? What happens when he gets arrested? Hey, Alicia. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, what is wrong with you to not be super excited that your daughter has decided to go to college? Like, off your rocker for sure, for sure. Anyways, and here's the thing. If you were like a broke person that has not made millions of dollars, that has not admitted to the tabloids that you blew through a million dollars on drugs, then maybe I could be like, you know what? Maybe they just can't afford it. Maybe she just can't afford to put her daughter through college. That's understandable. But you have you have blown through a million dollars on drugs. That money, the only reason you've ever even been able to make that type of money is due to Alana. Alana is the reason you are Mama June. Alana is the reason y'all have ever been on TV. Tellers and Tierras, everybody loved her. They loved her little catchy phrases. They loved her personality. Her on Tellers and Tierras caught the attention of the producers. Her, she did. I'm sure you did too, but it was mainly her. They decided to do Here Comes Honey Boo Boo because of her. Okay? You made all this money and now you don't even want to send her to college? You want to act like, oh, she needs to invest in herself? What? That's not what parents do. Parents do not look at their children and say, you need to invest in yourself before I do. What? Excuse me? Alana has not only invested in herself, but she invested in you all those hours that she worked on the show where she had to sit in a chair and say X, Y, and Z and when she couldn't be out playing with her friends because she had to film. What are you talking about, June Shannon? You are like, what? That's just an excuse. Say so she needs to invest in herself. No, June, you need to invest in your daughter for once because you never have. Anyways, yeah, it's freaking college. How's that not an investment? Exactly. Exactly. Anyways, next week I'm really going to go off because I got so much to say about next week's episode. Alana gets upset. She walks out. She's like, this should be a happy time. You're not happy. I'm out, right? So she walks out. So June says she's just concerned about Alana being able to live. That her and Justin has looked at houses on the outskirts of Denver and they were fifteen to two thousand dollars. So she's like, so Draylon would have to give a get a job. Alana would have to get a job to be able to survive. They do have jobs. They do work on the show. Like Alana and Draylon both make money on the show too. June told Pumpkin that if Alana wants to go to Colorado, then there will. They will no longer be riding on the road if something does happen. That is a part of growing up, too. Alana made the decision to go to Colorado out of state, so she knew that as well. When Alana made the decision to go to Colorado, she knew. She's 18. She's not an idiot. She knew my family's not going to be right there. She made that decision. That's one of the reasons she made that decision, so she could get away and do it on her own. Josh goes outside to talk to Alana. 
and he tells Alana that June, sh- I, I like this. He's like, you know, your mama really shouldn't be giving advice when it comes to making decisions because she has made bad decisions ever since I've been in this family. Love that. Yes. I do wonder sometimes, like when June watches this back and hears Josh make comments like that, like, I wonder, like, what does she think? Either way, he's like, yeah, June has no business making decisions for you because she's never made a good decision ever since I've been in this family. Josh said that he is glad that Alana told June that she's going to go to college. Not that she wants to go. He's like, I'm glad that you told her that you're going to go. Not that you want to go, but you're going to go. And you're going to do just that. And he says um, that she needs to spread her wings and fly. He's like, we'll come visit you. We're still going to be there. We'll come out whenever you, you need us. But it's your time to spread your wings and fly. Alana ends up getting in the truck. She doesn't come back out while they're packing up the house. Josh goes back in to help them wrap things up. They wrap things up moving. And then they all leave. So this is everybody leaving. Yes. I love you. All right. They're packing it up. They're leaving. It's really a two and a half car ride from the house in Alabama to the house in Georgia. But it shows a flip second. And they are pulling up to the house in Georgia. They get to the new house. And when they get to the new house, Pumpkin pulls up last, but that's because she went back and dropped Alana off at the house. So when they get there and Pumpkin gets out, June's like, where's Alana? And Pumpkin's like, I dropped her off at home because she's tired of your crap. She didn't want to come. June started again on all the reasons that she doesn't want Alana to go to Colorado. One of those reasons being Anna. She's like, you know, what about Anna? What if something happens to Anna and she's so far away that she can't get here in time? Pumpkin tells June that Anna has given Alana permission to go. Anna actually told Alana, if you don't go and I do die, I'm going to haunt you. You better go. Don't stay here on account of me. Pumpkin gets frustrated that June is bringing this up once again, and she decides to leave. She's like, you know what? Come on. She's like, come on, Dada, we're leaving. June tells Pumpkin, she's like, if you leave, then Josh is not going to be able to help Justin like finish unpacking. And Pumpkin says, oh, well, we told you we drive the U-Haul. Now help you set up your new house. So they leave. Pumpkin and Josh, they head out. And Justin is pretty mad at June. He's like, see, you just couldn't keep your mouth shut. Now I got to set everything up, set everything else up by myself. So thanks, June. So he's upset with her for doing that. Rightfully so, rightfully so. I mean, this is probably all whatever. Because she's grown and she's got to learn these things and make her own mistakes. I'm just telling her how you need to do it. Yeah, so be a Debbie Downer about it. So yeah, they leave. A few days after June moves into her new place, she lost a veneer while eating some taffy. In a confessional, she says that the last time she lost one of her teeth, it was a front tooth, and she promised herself she would never walk around again with no teeth. In this scene right here, she's calling several dentist offices to see how much it's going to cost her to get her tooth fixed. She doesn't have dental insurance, and she says that she's that it's going to cost like 30 k But I noticed that she said, she said something about to redo my top, to redo the, my, the top part is going to cost 30 k so I'm like, is she trying to get her whole top part redone versus just having that one veneer replaced? Because I know one veneer does not cost 30K. Now, maybe getting the whole top part of your mouth done, it will. Babe! Yo! These dentists have lost their ever freaking loving mind. All right, let's wait and see what it says. I wish I would have clipped this and, like, took the music out, but I feel like they're going to try to get me. Let's see. So, for them to totally do... My top yeah. is thirty-two thousand dollars. Okay, so for, the, for them to totally do her top is thirty-two thousand dollars. So I think she's saying like she like to get the whole top part of her mouth redone, re-veneered maybe. Maybe that's what she's saying. Um, snap-ons run about seven hundred. Get you some snap-ons, June, and keep it moving, girlfriend. June tells Justin about the price. He tells her he's like, we cannot do that. That is like a whole like double wide in your mouth. And he says, listen, we've spent a lot of money on Airbnbs, on traveling. So there's just no way we can do that. Um, June tries to argue. She's like, listen, I cannot walk around with a missing tooth. And he's like, listen, I walked around with no toothers in my mouth for a while. And June interrupts him to say, yep, and I loved you anyways. To which Justin responds, that's right. And I will love you anyways. So he kind of got her there where, you know, she's like, I can't walk around with a missing tooth. He's like, hey, listen. I, I walked around with no tooth first. And she's like, I love you anyway. So he's like, that's right. And I love you. So we're not fixing your tooth. Um, so he got her there. Then we flip over to Pumpkins. Alana is upstairs. She decides to call the college to see how she is to go about accepting her scholarship. 
And if the scholarship will cover the full tuition. I really think these calls are, I don't think these are real. I was told that the one phone call that was left on Alana's voicemail from the, the college, letting her know she was accepted. I was told that was a fake call that was done by one of their, one of their producers. And yet, to my knowledge, they don't call you anyways to let you know that you've been accepted. You get a letter in the mail. So I think they do recreate some of these situations just for the show. But I don't think she was actually calling like the, the, the school. I think this was like just after the show. Either way, she calls the college and she tells them that she had a $21,000 scholarship. And she was wondering if it would, how does she claim it? And if it would cover her whole, whole, her whole tuition. So the representative asks her her, own, her name puts her on hold, and then comes back and tells her that her tuition will be $43,000. So after the scholarship is applied, she will have to pay $22,000. And this is $11,000 per semester. So they're ba they're told, they're like, listen, yeah, that DA phone call was fake too. That's what I thought as well. So the, the, the college is like, listen, yes, you got a scholarship, but per year, you have to pay $43,000. So it only covers about half. So you're going to have to pay $11,000 per semester to pay, you know, to cover it. And they tell her, they're like, your first payment is due the week before school starts. Mind you, school is just a couple months away. So they only have a couple of months to figure out who's going to pay this $11,000. So, y'all, I can't with this next part. Y'all. But, y'all. Okay, so downstairs, Pumpkin is playing with Bentley. He's the cutest. His hair is an afro. I love it. And she loves it too. She's like, oh, Bubba Mans, I, I just love your hair. She's like, she says something like, your hair looks like Albert Einstein, the man that invented electricity. What? Hold on, let me see. You look like Albert Einstein, the man who invented electricity. She said, you look like Albert Einstein, the man that invented electricity. So this is awkward. Because um, let me tell you guys what happened yesterday. So yesterday, actually Saturday, when I was taking my son to get his date for prom and to do pictures, I was telling my 16-year-old son and my 10-year-old son about this part. I'm like, y'all, y'all know that family that I cover, the Mama June family. They're like, yeah. I'm like, so there was this one clip where the girl, Pumpkin, she's playing with her son's hair and he's got really big hair. And she tells him, oh, I just love your big hair. Uh, you look like Albert Einstein, the man that invented electricity. And both of my boys go, what? And my 10-year-old says, Albert Einstein didn't invent electricity. Benjamin Franklin discovered it. And I'm like, I was mind blown when she said Albert Einstein invented electricity. I was like, is she serious? And she was. She, she was like, didn't he? That's why. Either way, I, I was like, that is hilarious that she said that. And sometimes I think the show, they purposely leave these parts in just to remind us, like, kind of how uneducated they are. Like, I really do. Like, I really think, just like on the, like, the Honey Boo Boo show, like, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, I think they purposely, like, left bits in to remind us of how, like, um, uneducated they are. And I hate to say that, but really, I, I think it's production doing this to these people. Okay. All right. So. Alana goes downstairs. Remember, she just got off the phone with the college and found out that her, her tuition or her scholarship is not going to pay her full tuition. So she just got like some very like shocking news for her, you know, knowing that college is right around the corner and they have to pay this large sum of money. So she goes downstairs and she tells Pumpkin, she's like, listen, I just called the college to claim my scholarship and I found out that I'm still going to have to pay $22,000 per school year. 11,000 per semester. And Pumpkin is shocked. Um, so Alana's like, I'm thinking about maybe calling mom and asking mom if she would pay for it since she helped pay for Jessica's school. Um, she also brought up money from her Coogan account. She's like, listen, mama helped Jessica pay for Jessica's college, so maybe she'll pay for mine. But if not, maybe I can get my Coogan account money. So Coogan account, they are named in honor of Jackie Coogan. He was one of the first truly huge child stars. He starred in several big films in the 1920s. His earnings total today would have been anywhere from 48 to $65 million in today's time. Back then, it would have been like $4 million. Um, 
When Jackie reached the age of 18 and asked his parents for his money, he discovered that they had spent all of his earnings on living an extravagant lifestyle. This story brought about Coogan's Law, which requires that 15% of all earnings by a minor in the state of California be set aside in a block trust account until the child turns 18. Other states have similar laws, but Georgia does not. Georgia does not have the Coogan's Law, okay? So the show, Mama June, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, that was all filmed in Georgia. They don't have the Coogan Law. The only, like when she did Dancing with the Stars, when she did The Mass Singer, that money should have been put into a Coogan account. Now, June said 20%. So 5% is to go towards taxes. 15% is supposed to go into the Coogan account. And then I guess the other, you know, I know just 15% is even wrong. I agree. So Georgia has labor laws for children. But yeah, for my understanding, they don't have the Coogan's law. So Alana has taken on projects in California, like Dance with the Stars. Uh, the other one that I named a while ago, Mass Singer. So those jobs would have been paid and it would have went into her Coogan account. Her earnings from the show would not because they're filmed in Georgia. I'm going over my script again. So in a confessional, Pumpkin explains how June is the manager over Alana's Coogan account. She thinks Alana should have a decent amount in that account. Pumpkin and Alana talk about housing. Alana tells Pumpkin that she has looked for houses close to the campus, but they are pretty expensive. Alana says she don't want to live on campus because she has been on TV for several years and she doesn't want, you know, to be put in a dorm and it causes a scene because people's like, oh, I'm in the dorm with Honey Boo Boo. So she just prefer to live off campus. Also, she wants her boyfriend to, you know, she wants Draylon to move with her. Also, Honey Boo Boo and Draylon have been living together since Honey Boo Boo was, was 16. So uh, her said on the show, this will be the first time that me and my boyfriend has lived together. That is not true. Uh, in like October of 2020, I think it was, when Pumpkin found out she was pregnant with the twins, Alana was allowed to move in with Draylon. Uh, that was like two months after she turned 16. Why don't she get student loans? You know, I don't know why. I don't know if they know about FAFSA. And I don't know if they would qualify for it. You know, Pumpkin having to. I don't know on the court documents from when Pumpkin got custody of Alana. And they were seeking child support. I've seen those court documents. I showed them on my channel. How Pumpkin's monthly earnings. Like from the show was 10K. 10K a month. And June's was 30K. So I don't know if she really qualify for any funds from FAFSA. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But maybe she did do it. I'm not sure. Okay. So they're talking about what they're going to do. The Coogan account. Maybe asking June to help pay for college. And then we jump over to June and Justin. Justin is dropping June off to get her hair done. And he's going to go to the mall while he drops June off. Now, we see Dodo in a confessional explaining that, that she has not been able to get in contact with June, that she calls June and June won't, June won't answer. And she really wants to talk to June about everything that June has talked about her publicly. And she just wants them to come to an understanding that she would never do anything intentionally to hurt June or the girls, that she has been the one to be there for the girls this whole time while June was not. And she missed one thing. And now she's like the worst person, you know? So she wanted to talk to June and she knew that June was going to be getting her hair done. Because when she called June last week, I was like, hey, can you meet Friday? June was like, no, I'm going to be getting my hair done. So she's like, I know where she's going to be. I'm just going to pop in on her. Sure, production set this up as well, you know. It wasn't like, well, she said she was going to get her hair done Friday. You know exactly what time to roll up. Production told you. She drops in and June pretends to be shocked. Hey, what are you doing here? Didn't I what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you? I could have talked to you at Alana's graduation, but, you know, you wasn't there. Oh, well, why wasn't I there? I wasn't put in that group text that had all the information in it and the date. But everybody knew. No, nope. obviously not. But also when, like, all the shirts were ordered, that message was, there was 15,000 no. people no. in that message. My message, and I can show you on my phone, was between me and Alana. I asked her several times for the date. I was never in a group text. The only words I got was, it's the end of the month. It's the last week in the month. I can't help it that you won't communicate and no one wants to answer I don't phone. really, like, have nothing to say. I mean, I hate to say it, like, my life is so freaking busy. Like, so is mine. I do like the fact that June's like, my life is so busy. Dodo had a daughter, a grandchild. Like, she guess what, June? Dodo had a busy life 
back when you were running amok with Gino and y'all were doing God knows what, and you you were nowhere around your daughters. Dodo had a busy life then, and she had to take on being there for your children. Mind you, Dodo don't, don't live close to them. They live like two hours away. But Dodo's always made a point to go check on them, go be there for them. June, where were you at when Alana was starting her first day of high school? Where were you, June? Oh, you were skipping out on going to rehab, remember? Y'all remember that episode? Whenever it was, Alana was starting high school for the first time. June had Alana homeschooled, but never actually homeschooled her. So when Pumpkin got Alana and want, uh, Dodo's retired, whenever, um, whenever Pumpkin got Alana, they were like, we need to put you in school, you know? She had to take this test to see if she even qualified to be in the grade that she was supposed to be in, to see if she would even be put in high school. Thankfully, she did. Production got a call from June saying that she was ready to go to rehab. And then Alana's like recording herself, you know, talking to her mom. And she's like, so tomorrow I start high school, my first day of high school. And while I'm going through my first day of high school, you're going to be going through your first day of rehab. It looks like we both have big days ahead of us tomorrow. Y'all remember that when she was like recording herself, like, and then she goes to school and she comes back and she has to find out that her mama didn't even go to rehab. So not only did you not go to rehab, but you didn't even call your daughter to see how her first day was. Guess who was there for all that? Pumpkin and Dodo. You wasn't June. So you can't get mad at Dodo for not being there for one thing. When you missed out on five years, June Shannon, five years from the time that girl was 13 to the time she was 18, you were nowhere around. And now you're mad because Dodo missed one event? Girl, shut the front door. She claims she doesn't have any time to talk to me, but has plenty of time to write crap all over social media about me. <laughs> it says, hold on. Find Dodo. We're, we were all there for Alana, but not Dodo. And then she said, Dookie Pebble. Dookie Pebble, Dodo, no show. This was not real. This not, this not I did not see this really go up on social media. I think this was something that... that the show put out just to make it look like June was talking about Dodo, which she really was. I did hear June really talk about Dodo, but it wasn't this blatant. Yeah, June got money for lashes, nails, hair extensions. That stuff ain't cheap. It really ain't. Alana reads this. All the girls do, but Alana right now is reading it and now believing it. Okay, so that's them in the salon where they're going back and forth over, you know, dodo not being there right so june calls out dodo for missing graduation june says no dodo knew the date because she was in the group chat dodo says she was never in the group text that she had directly messaged with alana june brought up the shirts saying if she wasn't in the initial group chat she was definitely in the group chat about the shirts because everyone was in that chat dodo says nope she was not in that one either and she could show june on her phone how she was not in any group text about the graduation that she was only conversing with Alana and Alana alone. Dodo tells June that she even went to the school's web website to see if the date was up, but did not see it. She only saw the last day of school, but if June would have communicated with her, she would have known. June tells Dodo that she doesn't have time to call her and update her or give her details concerning the family because she's too busy taking care of her family, to which Dodo says, so am I, I have a family too. Dodo in a confessional says that June claims to have no time but has plenty of time to talk crap on social media and she knows the girls are reading it and she wants that to stop today june tells dodo that she and the girls agree this is something that really made me mad she said you know what everybody agrees with me pumpkin josh alana jessica all the girls agree with me that whenever i first started coming around to try to reconcile you told me to back off dodo interrupts her saying i never told you to back off i told you to let the girls come to you and she said, I don't know why you lie about that. And then the show literally shows a clip of Dodo saying exactly what Dodo says she said. So after Mama June did the pop-up at the meet and greet, uh, Pumpkin went off on June at that meet and greet. And June got really upset, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm trying to come around and they won't let me come around. Dodo met up with June and was like, listen, you just got to, like, give it time, you know, like, Say you're sorry, 
but don't just drop in because you don't want to be the person that nobody wants there. You know, like let them invite you to things. You're going to have to say you're sorry until they take it. You know what I'm saying? Dodo never told her not to do it or to back off. She just told her, like, you have to understand, sometimes they're not going to want to hear it. They're not going to want to hear it at first, but just keep saying you're sorry until they finally want to hear it, you know? It shows a clip from last season where Dodo and June are having dinner, and Dodo is telling June, you're going to need to say you're sorry as much as it takes until the girls are okay and ready to accept it. She also said, wouldn't you rather be invited to family events versus just popping up? This was after June popped up at the meet and greet. Justin even Justin even agreed with Dodo in the clip. So I'm glad it showed that clip because it showed that, that June was lying and that Dodo was telling the truth and that Justin even agreed. Now back in the salon, Dodo says, I'm the aunt, you're the mom. You're back now. So I can back away and start spending more time with my family, my daughter, my grandson. I don't have to be there 24 seven for your family anymore. June says, I tell people to show up if they want to be around. Dodo responded by reminding her how much she has shown up for not only the kids, but for her too, for June too. And that she stepped back because June asked her to. She said, you asked me to back the hell up when you come back into the girls' lives. She told Dodo that she is back now so she can back away and let June take over. She's like, you told me to back away. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to let you, you know, Come back around. I was trying to hang out with my family more because I have been kind of with your family so much. I haven't been with my family as much as I would like. So now that you're back, I've been spending more time with my family. Dodo said, I told you, I'm glad that you're back. This is what I wanted. And this is what the girls have needed. I've been waiting for this so I can start taking care, taking care of my family, my business, and my grandson. She told her that when June started disappearing and slacking with her family, that, you know, she was there to pick up the slack. Um, and she wasn't there for her family like she would like to be. Dodo says she never tried to be their mother, that she always was their aunt. And she reminded the girls that all the time, that she was just the aunt. She told June that not only was she there for the girls, but she's always been there for June as well. She's like, I've covered your butt so many times, you don't even know. Dodo tells June that she should give her some credit rather than keeping her name in her mouth and bashing her in the media. Dodo tells June that she doesn't even appreciate how much she's been there for her and the girls. That if she wants her to back off, she will. But she will not back away from the girls or the grandkids. That she's always going to be there for them. Dodo then apologizes to the lady up front and then she leaves. And I think Dodo was like, Dodo has really been there for June and June's girls. And now that June's back, she has kind of backed away. Uh, but that's what June asked her to do. You know, June said, I'm back now. You can back away. Well, she's done just that. And now because she missed one event that June thinks she should have been at. Well, June, how would you feel if they were still holding this grudge at you for everything that you missed? You want everybody to forgive you, but you had five years of not showing up. In a confessional, June says, Dodo acts like Little Miss Perfect, but she is the one that's pissed off everyone. Then we see Dodo in a confessional after that. And she says she knows that June didn't hear a word that she said. But at the end of the day, she was there for the girls, and the girls know that. She was like, I was there for them girls. They know it. They're going to remember it. Jump over to Pumpkin's house. Pumpkin and Alana, they're trying to make a checklist for what Alana needs to do to be ready for college. At the top of the list, Pumpkin wants Alana to call June and ask June about the Coogan money. Well, she wants to ask June, like, hey, can you help? And if not, what, what about the Coogan money? Alana is really nervous to call her mama because the last time they tried to get money out of June, was when June and Pumpkin went to the lawyer to sign over custody. And the lawyer told June that she would have to pay child support. A lot of people are very confused about June's situation with custody when it comes to Alana. June signed custody over to Pumpkin. She did not sign over her full parental rights, which meant she had to pay child support. I saw some people commenting on one of the Mama June fan pages saying, Oh, Pumpkin wants help now, but, um, you know, she was quick to rip Alana away from June. She was quick to make June sign over her rights. Uh, June ain't got rights no more. Pumpkin has those rights, so Pumpkin should have to pay. And I'm like, is this, is this June? Like, like, what? First off, Alana did not rip, I mean, Pumpkin did not rip Alana from June. June and Gino 
were going out of town 24 7 leaving alana home by herself or alana had to go stay with pumpkin and josh before they started doing that they were doing drugs so bad in the house they were forgetting where their needles were they were little needles were in people's shoes one time pumpkin went to put on a sandal outside and there was a needle in it one time josh is getting laundry out of the dryer his it was laundry that his daughter and this was when ella was a newborn he gets the laundry there's a needle in the laundry okay so alana was living in a house where there were two addicts that were so careless with their drugs that drugs was showing up everywhere and and needles were everywhere alana did not feel safe she voiced that uh mama june and gino were taken off going out of town so pumpkin and josh decided to move out with their child because they didn't feel like it was safe for them alana didn't feel safe and mama june was leaving her all the time so yeah pumpkin did what she thought was right she decided to take alana in and when june disappeared and didn't come home for weeks at a time she called june and she said hey you know what you're not going to see either Alana or Ella until you get your act right. That's what she should have did. Anybody that's going to say, oh, she ripped Alana away from June. What? June was not acting like a mom. June was acting like she had no kids at all when she had a 13 year old at home that she should have been taking care of. What are you talking about? And when you, so when you take a kid in, when you take a kid in and you're not their mom, you can't do certain things. You can't take them to the doctor. You can't get them enrolled in school. You can't check them out of school. You can't do certain things because you're not their parent. So in order to be able to do the things that they needed to do, like enroll her in school, be able to take her to the doctor, be able to do anything, they needed some sort of rights to her. So they had to do that. They didn't get custody of Alana because they were trying to rip her away from June. It was because Alana was living with them because June was running behind a man in drugs. Could you guys imagine if Pumpkin wouldn't have taken Alana in and she was left in that two-story house while June, while June and Gino were in Alabama every other week at casinos? A 13-year-old would have been home by herself. So Pumpkin did the best thing that she could. I was like mind blown when I saw that comment. Um, but no, June did not, sign over full like uh she did not sign her parental rights away that's why she had to pay child support because she still has parental rights okay she just signed over like custody to pumpkin so pumpkin could make decisions and because pumpkin had custody and she was still legally the parent she had to pay child support um and like i said i've covered there uh not too long ago the custody agreement on you know how much it said they made um at first they were trying to make june pay two thousand dollars a month for child support and june refused she's like i will not pay two thousand dollars on my child support um and they were basing that off her we tv pay 30 grand a month june makes makes money from her disability because she's blind so she has disability income and then she has income from the show now when they went to court for child support they were in the middle of filming and they had not signed on for a new season. So that's how June got out of paying two grand a month. She said, yeah, we do the show. But at this point, we don't know if we're going to get another season. And if we don't, I can't pay child support based on income that I don't have. This income is not certain. We never know how long it's going to last. And right now, we don't even know if we're going to have it again. So the judge based the child support off her disability income. And that's why it was $800 a month. Um, but anyways, so Pumpkin's like, hey, Alana, call June and ask her if she'll help you with your tuition. If not, ask her about the Coogan account. And Alana's like, ooh, I don't know. The last time, you know, we had to get money out of mama. It, it didn't go good. Uh, it was, you know, during the custody situation and she got really mad. June literally said she would rather allow Pumpkin to adopt Alana just so she didn't have to pay child support. She literally said that. So Alana does call June. June's in the hair salon. She's just talked to Dodo. Um, here's the clip. Look at June's face. She's like, what? Child? June ain't coming up off her money. If anybody wants to know, you know, what type of mama June is, ask her about money. <laughs> ask her about money. Nope.
You can have them. Is there a number you're willing to put on the table, June? There's not. We'll just take it to court. She ended the lawyer said, June, is there a number you're willing to throw out there for child support? Nope, not even a number. Not even a number. And Pumpkin has to says, we'll just take her to court. If that doesn't tell you tell you there how Alana feels about her mama saying she ain't even have a second to talk. Alana knows. She's like, my mama don't care to talk to me. She ain't even have a second to talk about something that I needed to talk to her about. These girls know this. That's why I'm so mind blown that Pumpkin, Alana, Jesse, they don't step up to say, no, June should not have Caitlin. Mind you, in the background, they say that, uh, allegedly. Uh, Y'all, allegedly in the background, June, Jesse, and Alana have all said, no, Mama doesn't need Caitlin. Now, I don't know what they're going to say if they get put in front of a judge and a judge asks them, do you think your Mama should have Caitlin? I don't know what they'll say. They may say, yeah, sure, great, Mom. Or they may say, uh, no, honestly, no. But I've heard in the background, they don't think that she needs Caitlin. I think it's very telling that we see them on the show act this way and behave this way, talking about their mom. She never makes good decisions. Oh, she never got time to talk to me. When it comes to money, she ain't going to do it. Um, it's very telling. You know what I'm saying? Even on TikToks, they, they, they used to talk about how June is. Anyway, let's continue. Everybody's like, oh, uh, on the on the on the Mama June fan page, like, well, why does June want um want Caitlin? You know, is she gonna get SSI benefits? Is she gonna get survivor benefits or what? And I'm like, y'all, she's gonna get money from the show. Caitlin's on the show. A contract has been signed for Caitlin already. Caitlin has been on the show. She they're filming now. June knows if Caitlin's on that show. They got to pay Caitlyn. Guess what? Georgia ain't got the Coogan law. So every bit of Caitlyn's money goes right into June's hands. So even if June wasn't considering survivor benefits, SSI benefits for Caitlyn, she was already banking on money from the show for Caitlyn. And that's why she wants Caitlyn, in my humble opinion. Anyways, let's get back to the episode. Okay, so uh, yeah, she's like, Mama, don't, she didn't even have time to talk to me. Because says they just need to go to June and talk to her about this in person and to bring Jessica. She's like, we need to bring Jessica with us. That way she can't deny that she paid for Jessica's college. Something else. That's telling that Pumpkin remembers that June paid for, Jess for Jessica's college, but she worries that June will lie and say she didn't. So she feels she needs to bring Jessica along with them. Anyways, after that, we jump on over to Mama June and Justin. They're on their way back from the salon. June is complaining to Justin about Dodo showing up at the salon. Saying that when Dodo doesn't get her way, she shows out. Like, when has Dodo ever showed out? I don't know if Dodo ever showing out. Guess who's showing out? June's showing out. Dodo didn't show up for one event, and June is showing out. So it ain't Dodo that shows out. It's June. She says that Dodo tries to act like she's there for everyone, but she's the one that missed graduation. Justin asked June if they were able to find a resolution in their issue, and June said no. June then tells Justin that after Dodo left, Alana called her wanting to talk, but she had just gotten into it with Dodo, so she told Alana she would have to call her later. And she seems very irritated. She seems very irritated that Alana called. She's like, and after Dodo left, Alana called me wanting to talk to me, but I told her I couldn't talk to her because Dodo had just came in and, and I was aggravated, so I let her go. And Justin's like, have you called her back? And she's like, no. She's like, it's probably something like the fact that, you know, she even want to call like it's probably something, you know. And he's like, June, the whole reason you wanted to be here was to be closer to the girls. Now, when they're calling you to talk to you, you're not even talking to them. Like you haven't even called her back. He's like, call her back. See what she wants. June seems so frustrated that a lot of called her needing something, you know. So she's like, oh, I guess. So she gets on the phone. She calls Alana back and she's like, hey, what did you want? And Alana's like, you know what? Never mind. Um, I'm just going to come over and talk to you. And June's like, okay, uh, you can come over tomorrow and I'll make your favorite meal. And Alana's like, yeah, make shepherd's pie. And she says, it's not going to be just me. It's going to be me, Pumpkin, and Jesse. We're all coming over. We'll be over tomorrow. Make dinner. We'll come over and I'll talk to you about what I got to talk to you about. She's like, okay. So she asked Alana, though, she's like, what's so serious that you have to tell me in person? And that Pumpkin and Jesse have to be there as well. 
Alana tells June that she will just have to see when she gets there. So they decide to go the next day. Um, when June gets off the phone with Alana, she tells Justin, she's like, something, like, this got to be something big because she's bringing Pumpkin and Jessica over to tell me. She then says, I hope Alana's not pregnant. And Justin's like, oh, dear God. Like, no, don't even say that. We flip to Jessica is taking Anna and the girls, Caitlin and Kylie, to the chocolate vault for ice cream. And Jessica says that since Anna has started chemo, she hasn't really talked to her that much. So she's like, you know, I want to like just touch bases with her and see how everything is going, right? Anna gives Jessica an update that she's had a recent scan and that everything was kind of the same. Anna tells Jessica that she is ready to get better so she can go back to work. Kylie tells Anna that she doesn't want her to go back to work. So Kylie is the eight-year-old, but when this was filmed, she was the seven-year-old. So I, I thought that was very telling that Anna was saying, like, I'm so ready to get back to work because that tells me that Anna really, even though the doctors were saying, get your affairs in order, you need to get your affairs in order. Anna's telling Jessica, I'm so ready to get back to work. I can't wait till I can get back to work. She really was like so out of touch with like the reality of her situation. Thank you so much, Blood Moon. I really do appreciate that so much, you guys. So um, after that, Anna and Jessica start talking about Alana going to college. Now, Alana will have to pay for some of the college. And Jessica says, yeah, we're going to June's later to talk about the money situation. So Anna don't know nothing about this. Jessica's like, so Alana found out that her tuition is not going to pay for everything. So we're going over to mom's later to talk to mom about the college situation because Alana's going to need some money. Anna's like, I want nothing to do with that. She's like, I know that's going to be a crap show to go ask mama for money. She's like, I want nothing to do with it. And then we see in a confessional, Anna reminded us that she's been there, done that with mama, with mama June. She's like, you know what, me and Mama June, we've already had our problems concerning money, and I want nothing to do with it. So I have a clip for that, too. Mama's tonight and talk about the money situation. I don't know how that's going to go. That's going to be a show. I love my family to death and all that, but I am. When it, once it comes to money talk and like that, I don't want no part of it because been there, done that, got messy. Okay, so right here it says, here comes the lawsuit. Mama June's pregnant daughter, Anna, Claims her mom cheated her out of three hundred thousand dollars from the TV show payment. So this was back when Anna was about let's see, eighteen, nineteen years old, maybe. After Here Comes Honey Boo Boo got canceled because Mama June hooked up with Anna's the man that abused Anna. Mama June hooked up with him. The show got canceled, and Anna was like, "Okay, June, where's my money from being on the show?" I need my money for being on the show. I'm on my own. I have a daughter. I'm married. Where's the money that I made from the show? And June's like, um, it's only like, you only have $15,000 left. When it should have been like 300K from being on the show for like two years or something. And she's like, what? Like, where's all my money? And June, June on the Dr. Phil show says, oh, well, she had a cell phone. I paid her cell phone bill out of her money. When she wanted new clothes, it came out of her money. If she wanted her hair done, it came out of her money. So you mean to tell me, June, you had a daughter living with you who was making money from the show, but every penny that it cost her to live, you took it out of her money? So you didn't even financially raise your daughter because it came out of her money? That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have an obligation to take care of our children. You know, and here's the thing. If you wanted to pay that money, like when she wanted to get her hair done, if you was like, you know, I'm not paying for it. Even though June had enough money back then, when Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was going on because they were making bank back then. If you didn't want to pay for it, why didn't you tell her, you know what, if you want to get your hair done, it's coming out of your money from the show. She never even told her. And then she said, oh, it's got like $15,000 left in the account because I paid this and paid that, paid this and paid that. I'll send it to you. Anna said she never got it. June told Dr. Phil she sent it to Anna in a money order. Anna says she never got that money order. So that's what Anna's talking about here when she's like, you know what, been there, done that. When I tried to get my money from June for the show, I never got it. And it got messy. I had to sue her, you know. So she wants no part of it. Jessica, Punk and all, Alana, y'all can have that money talk. I don't want it. 
Call me with a tea later. So, I mean, I think Mama's iffy about wanting to leave because Alana was the baby. I mean, and I don't think she, she has wants no her reason baby to, to leave. stop her because y- you left her a long time ago. Yeah. Mama left us all just to sit there and fend for herself for a long time. We all have to go to Mama's tonight. That, that last is very telling. Anna's like, you know, maybe it's because she's the baby and she just don't want to see her go. Just it's like she left her a long time ago, so she's got no say over whether or not she goes to college. And then Anna says, Mama left us to fit for ourselves for a long time. Tracy, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that so much. I really, really, really do. I haven't worked that much lately, so I really do appreciate that. I really think it's really funny to see them like call June out because that's the truth of the matter. June wants to jump on her live streams and act like She's been such a great mama, and she was there for Anna throughout her her cancer treatments. And while she was there some, she was not there as much as she's making it out. Um, she could have helped Anna in ways that she didn't. Anna could have been able to spend more time with her husband, her kids. If Mama June wanted to step up and help her, she didn't. So I do like the fact that these adult kids are putting the truth out there through the show. For Anna to say, for for Jessica to say, June shouldn't be able to stop Alana from going to college just because she's the baby and she don't want to see her go. She left her a long time ago. And Anna's saying, she left us all. She left us all to fend for ourselves when we were just children. Okay. I'm going to left us all just to sit there and fend for ourselves for a long time. <laughs> Anna's like, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm not going to be there for that. And Jessica's like, my head's already hurting just thinking about it. Later that evening, the girls show up at June. Justin decides he's going to go to Josh's and help Josh hang out with the kids. He's like, I'm going to let you and the girls have it. I'm going to go hang out with Josh and help him with the kids. You know, he orders pizza and he shows up at Josh's house. Uh, The girls, they get there to June's house. Alana says she is super nervous to ask June for money because they just started getting close again. Of course, Pumpkin Alana, they noticed that June's tooth is missing. So they pointed out and they asked what happened. They're like, is your tooth missing? She tells them that she broke her tooth while eating taffy. Um, She also tells them, she's like, yeah, I called the dentist and it's going to cost like 30 grand to fix it. So they're like, what? 30 grand? In a confessional, Pumpkin says, you know, the old mama would have fixed her tooth and not helped Alana. But I'm hoping the new mama will help Alana and worry about her tooth later. The girls, they fix their plate of shepherd's pie. And I saw so many comments about how horrible the shepherd's pie looked, but I didn't even notice. Because on these pages, like I said, I follow these pages. And so many comments was like, oh, my God. Hold on. Everybody was like, oh, my. Okay. All right, I see what they're talking about. Y'all, my mama makes some banging, but uh banging shepherd's pie. All right, point taken. Um, anyways, they make their plates and they all sit down and pumpkin starts telling June about how Alana has only gotten a month to get everything situated. So they need to go out to Colorado, find a house, tour the college. She then brings up the fact that Alana has to make her first payment in just a couple of weeks. June looks a little stunned and says, oh, wow. You know how June says, oh, wow, to everything? She's like, oh, wow. And she says, well, what about the $21,000 scholarship? Alana tells her that the scholarship will not cover the full tuition, that her full tuition is $43,000. June is shocked and asks, she says, how are you going to come up with $50,000 a year to pay for this? Alana reminds her, that she will have the $21,000 to cover some of it. She says, so I'm only going to, I'm going to have to pay 11 grand per semester. She then says, so mama, can you help me pay for college? And the show ends right there. No preview. So when I watched this two weeks ago, I didn't know where we were going to go for this. Uh, You know, where were we going to go? But now I know when Alana says, so mama, can you help me? June's basically like, I don't have any money. I just got back up on my feet. I don't know what I don't know what to do. And they bring up the Coogan account. They're like, well, what about the Coogan account? And June lies and says, you can't get the Coogan account until you're 21. She literally lies and says, well, you can't touch that until you're 21. And then Jesse is like, I think if you're going to school or if you have medical expenses, you can. So, Bobby, you need to call about this. And June's like, well, it's only, yeah, it's only a matter of calling. I can call and see, but I'm pretty sure you can't access it until you're 21. I think 
there's not going to be money in there or it's not going to be as much as they thought. Something's happened. So I think June was saying 21, 21, 21 to give her a few more years to pay back the money that's missing from the account. I think June maybe have planned, and I'm giving her credit here to say that I thought maybe, because she she's talked to the girls previously about the account, because she tells Justin, she's like, you know, I've lied to my girls. I've told them in the past that they can't touch the Coogan account until they're 21. So this is something she's discussed with them before. So I do wonder if she was hoping to make that money back up and put it back in the account. You know what I'm saying? Didn't when Pumpkin that took Alana in sued. Okay, so I do remember that. Hold on. I do remember them getting a lawyer to try to get access to Alana's money. I do remember what you're talking about. I'm not going to find anything from back then. Everything is very... Mama June admits the line to our kids. Mama June admits the line about our kids' money as Alana. Mama June is called selfish for chipping in nothing. Mama June admits the line about kids' money. I remember hearing that Lauren had hired an attorney to try to get um, Alana's money back because they were scared that she would spend it. Yeah, without Alana, no one would know who they are. And that's why I'm like mind blown that she's like, I, I can't pay for her college. I can't chip in for her college. Pumpkin, what are you going to do? What the fact? Okay, on next week's episode, when Pumpkin calls June and asks about the Coogan account, June says, well, what are you and Josh going to do? First off, Josh ain't got to do nothing. Josh married into this family. It's definitely not on him to put a penny towards Alana. Second, it's not on, it's not on Pumpkin either. Pumpkin's did more than her part. Pumpkin is only like 22. She's only like three or four years older than her sister. The fact that anybody would think that this is on Pumpkin and Josh, they, they took her in. They, they had her for about three and a half years, but they raised her. When you bring in somebody else, all of your bills go up. Your water bill, your electricity, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Yeah, the money was probably already gone. Probably, yeah. I'm just so mind blown to hear June say, what are you and Josh going to do? Mind you, when on next week's episode, when Mama June asked Pumpkin this, she literally calls Mama June and says, hey, like, what about the Coogan account? Me and Josh are getting ready to take Alana to Colorado to look for apartments, to tour the campus. And she, what are y'all going to do? Excuse me. They're flying her to Colorado to view the campus. To look for an apartment that costs money there what do you mean they're already they're already doing things like I, i'm like what pixie sticks and mountain dew yes so back when alana was on the show uh taj and tiaras she before she would go on stage mama june would have her drink a red bull with mountain dew and eat a pixie stick to give her a lot of energy so she could perform well this was when that girl was like seven, six, seven years old. She was down in Mountain Dew and Red Bull and Pixie Sticks. If I did that today, I would probably be so sick. We will do, I be livid. I get nothing for my two-year-olds, bio parents, no clothes, diapers, wipes, not even birthday or Christmas presents. How dare June ask what pumpkin is? I know. Like, I mean, I don't understand how June, how pumpkin did not go off on June in that moment. Um. I don't know. If June tries to say in court that the show is scripted for her behaviors, then she would not be able to say that Anna say on the show is real, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good point. So if Michael tries to say, well, June did this on the show. June is, look, here's the show. June refusing to even help her daughter go to college. Here's on the show, June her daughter, Alana, calling her out for stealing her money. Blah, 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 blah. If June says, oh, that's scripted TV. Oh, but here's the part where Anna says she wants me to have Caitlin scripted TV. And let me tell you something. I don't think we're going to see that. I don't think we're going to see Anna say, Mama, I want you to have Caitlin. I think we're going to see, because June's already said, Anna says she wanted Eldridge to adopt Caitlin, but she won't go through with it. 
because she won't go through with anything because Anna was in denial, clearly. And in this episode, she talked about going back to work. She was clearly not realistic about how bad it was, you know? So I think the reason Anna didn't do anything is because Anna, for some reason, thought that she was going to be this. So I've been told by so many sources that Anna wanted Michael and Eldridge to have the girls, to keep them on the rotation that we're basically on. Michael have them for a week. Eldridge have them for a week. Michael have them for a week. Eldridge have them for a week. Now, I will say, well, she would have been blasting that recording in court all over social media. Exactly. I think what we're going to see is June, like, badgering Anna. Like, well, what do you want? And I guarantee nobody's going to be with Anna. Guarantee you, I feel like we're going to see, like, June, like, well, Anna, what do you want? Anna, what do you, you know, you need to let us know. You need to, and I feel like she's not going to do it in the presence of Eldridge. Um, she's probably going to do it when Anna's by herself, not feeling well. Anna, you got to tell us what, and I feel like Anna's going to be like, oh my God, mama, like, I already told you, you know, like, I feel like it's going to be like something like that. Like, but June herself has admitted what, what Anna wanted, that she wanted Eldridge to adopt Caitlin. I had talked to people that talked to Anna up until the day before she passed. From the moment she found out, she had conversations with people to the day before she passed. She told somebody, please make sure my girls are taken care of and that they are with so-and-so and so-and-so. -so. They are with Michael and Eldridge. And I'm sure Eldridge knows this as well. I'm positive Eldridge knows that Anna wanted him and Michael to raise those girls. She did not want those girls split up. She And when I say Michael and Eldridge, what she wanted was for Michael to have Caitlin and Kylie for one week and them to go to Eldridge for one week and back to Michael for one week and back to Eldridge for one week. and back. So she wanted them to stay together, but still get to see Eldridge. Anna has always viewed Michael as both of those girls' fathers. I've been going back in older episodes. I've found clips. I, you know, June trying to say that they had Caitlin up until she was four years old. That is not true. Go back to the old Honey Boo Boo videos. Uh, you have to pay for them to watch them now. But if you just go back and see the titles, if you go back and read the titles of the Honey Boo Boo episodes, it'll tell you there. Here, let me see. I took screenshots of the titles. <clears throat> and if I have time, I'm going to go back and watch them one day. Okay. Season four, episode one. Okay. This is filmed June 8th, 2014. Caitlin would be two when it came out. It was probably filmed about six months prior. So she'd be about one and a half. Even a life-size Mario Lopez cut out can't boost birthday girl June's spirits as she copes with empty nests when Anna and Caitlin decide to move out. Extra time allows her to work at a bakery, leaving Sugar Bear alone to become a domestic housewife. So this adds up with my timeline. When she when Caitlin was about less than two years old. Anna and Caitlin moved out. Anna got married to Michael. This is season four, episode one. Season one, episode three. Wait. Okay, this is when the whole family throws Chickadee a baby shower. This is August 14, 2012. I guess they're out of order. Season one, episode five. The family decorates for an annual Christmas in July celebration, but the fun... But the fun, when Anna is rushed to the hospital with contractions, the family faces a tough decision when June suggests any pet pig glitzy back to... Okay, so episode five, season one, Anna is rushed to the hospital with contractions. I don't think she... Okay, after a trip to the ER, pregnant Anna returns home with strict orders to take it easy. So this is when she's pregnant. Alain... Alana gears up for her big pageant, but plans change last minute when Chickadee goes into labor. Ba baby Caitlin arrives, and it's soon obvious that she's a very special baby. This was this was released October 25th, 2012. We know that she was, when's her birthday? Okay, so Caitlin's birthday is... July 26, 2012. This was released 
October 25th, 2012. Just three months later. So this aired three months later, okay? <clears throat> um, season two, episode six, Jessica and Annie, Anna study to take their driver's test and the girls teach June the rules of the fart game doorknob. So this was July 30th, 2013. So sh let, me, let me just say, one day I'm going to go over all of this and put this in order. June did not care for Caitlin ever at all. Even when Caitlin lived with them, Anna lived with them, and Anna was a very active mom. She was the mom. June was the grandmother. Just because your daughter and her daughter lived with you does not mean you raised her. Anna was a really good mom. Like, Anna was a really active mom. She did not go out and throw Caitlin off on June. She was there in the house. She was always holding Caitlin. She was always taking Caitlin anywhere with her. It was not like she had her baby and left her baby. That comment that June made that, oh, well, we raised Caitlin for the first four years of her life when Anna wasn't ready to be a mama. That is a slap in the face to Anna because Anna was a mama. Anna jumped right in to start raising the baby the second she had that baby. To say that she was never ready to be a mom or she wasn't ready for the first four years of her life, if I was Anna, I'd be rolling over my grave. I mean, I know she's, you know, but that is, you are literally, you ever heard the term like spitting on the dad or whatever? And she's your daughter. Like how horrible. A lot of people, when a family member dies, they paint them in like the best light possible. But June doesn't do that. June's daughter dies and she's on TV talking about how, oh, she had to have all these men tested because she didn't know who her baby daddy was. Lie. She always knew who her baby daddy was. Oh, she didn't want to be a mom for the first four years of her life. Lie. Like, I don't understand what type of mama does that. And if I was pumpkin, Jessica, Alana, I would be side-eyeing my mom, knowing that all these things were fake and false and lies, and that she was saying that about my sister. I mean, what's she going to say about me when I die? You know? It's horrible. Anyways, you guys, this has been an hour and 33 minutes. I'm going to have to, I have to take my son to the eye doctor, and when I get back, I'm going to have to edit this down and everything. Um, I think tonight, I'm just going to do a hangout. I know I need a, I got a lot to catch up on, but I feel like I just need to, like, hang out with you guys. So tonight, I think I'm just going to do a hangout, catch you guys up with what's been going on in my life lately, and just hang out with y'all. So uh, that'll probably be about seven, six or seven that we'll do like a hangout central time. I'll try to schedule it like an hour in advance. So if you guys want to hang out and just kind of catch up with everything that's been going on in my life, it's been a lot. I'm just like so emotionally drained. It's crazy, but I kind of need like a, a reset. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, join me back here later. We're off to the eye doctor. When I get back, I will edit this. So if you are watching on replay and there's, I know I had to stop for a minute to get something out of my eye. And then there was ads that I had to change. If you don't want to watch all of that and you want to watch a more put together video, just come back later after I have time to edit. I love you guys. Like, share, subscribe, bring your go-go juice later. And I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.